Making techno low end could be extremely confusing. But today we are going to take a look three surprisingly easy way to make techno bass. So idea starts with getting darker smooth kick. I'm gonna go to my debut in analog techno drum kicks. So the first thing that I have to make sure that the length of the kick is actually somewhere around here because we will have some tom hits we want to have a place for them for those who are not sure about the kick lengths I have a video just about that I will edit here so let's shorten this up now and I want a smooth tail so that I can blend in things here if you want to go a bit darker bring in an EQ8 roll off the highs a little bit I'm gonna just use a white tail, bring in any so tool that you have, keep the envelope this way, give a little bit release and put your synthesizer into a mono mode. And then you have to just get a filter, make it very dark. Very deep and dark. Now we are in F, so I'm gonna go to F. Try avoid putting it where the kick is, like kick his own beats here, the hand there. So I'm gonna put move something like this. Make slight a bit groove to make it a bit more authentic. Of course, just to make sure that there is like a nice smooth transition from kick to sub bass, I'm going to introduce just a, a side chain to the kick. Now, the magic happens when you introduce another tom sound, a percussive bass sound that glues everything all together. Go to my Debian analog drums because I know there are some cool toms there. Now, the main idea is creating the groove without just not thinking about the side bass. So, Dun, 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 kind of right sometimes the tom and the sub bass will hit exactly the same time and sometimes tom will hit somewhere that the sub bass doesn't exist creating this real depth in your low end or the, in your sub bass area especially i'm gonna maybe to probably tune this to f let me do it minus seven listen take a listen again it really turns into a sub bass and hits around our sub bass hitting. So what I'm going to do, bring the length down here a bit and then just loop and try to figure out rhythm. Do you hear how the sub bass and this tom kind of dancing each other? You can also make it a bit more authentic by just going around EQing a bit. Final thing is making everything a bit more glue. Actually, I also take my sub bass, side change the tom, duplicate this, and then just click the tom. So the when the tom hits, I also want the sub bass to duck a little bit because they are still in the same bay area. You can already use this sound the way you like, but if you want to make everything a bit more glued together, what I would suggest, use something like drum bass or distortion to just distort them all together. A little bit dry, a little bit damp, creating this darker sound. And on top of that, you can use something like a slow attack, medium release, glue compressor to glue everything up. And if you want to color the everything together, a channel EQ will really do wonders here. That's it, you get it. I actually have a release coming next Friday using exactly this method. So this track is called Valerie. Look at the low end, super simple. And when you add things together on top of that, this creates a really smooth, beautiful low end. If you want to take a look at the track, I will add the links below. You can take a listen on Beatport or you can already use the pre-save links for the Spotify. On the second method, we will do something completely contrary and we will make very unconventional kick and rumble. Just go to my peak time techno kicks getting kind of a drum break. Busiest is better because we are going to stretch and bend the sound to make a rumble. A lot of shuffling, a lot of drum hits, this is really perfect. Pitching it down, probably around 40 hertz, 50 hertz, somewhere around the sweet spot, maybe even 60 hertz, depending on how deep you want to go. You bring a spectrum analyzer, take a look at where you are picking most. So we are around like 90 hertz, so we are not there yet, right? So we're gonna go back, go a bit more, one octave more, I will say. Our kick drum is getting really low here, we don't want this. But this, this area getting busier now, no? Bring an EQ, cut everything off. And then you want something a bit repeatable, so duplicate this one more time. By the way, I have a full rumble tutorial video. I will add it here so you can take a look at their very confessional, more professional way of doing this. This one is more experimental. And then you're gonna use a reverb. 
we don't need to go 100%, we can bring down the stereo and I would definitely use a utility, put into mono and I want to distort as well, so amp. At the moment it sounds obnoxious because it's really loud and like random and I'm gonna bring that EQ one more time here and finally I'm gonna add a cut chain to compressor. Now we are sounding more like rumble, right? Let's bring the kick back. Right click, freeze and flatten. That will bring us the audio form so that we can actually even sculpture more from the bass that we have. We will see these imperfections that make the rumble much more authentic than it should be with other methods. And we have this reversed fishbone style. Pick the areas that I like. This is like very good, right? This area is fine as well. It's kind of this area that I don't like that much because it's just too smooth. Take this off. Maybe I can bring something like this back. The other thing, I can actually manually create the room for my kick, right? If you want to make it more visual for yourself, you can also freeze and flood in your kick. Now you see how long your kick is and how you have to blend this kick into your rumble. For example, here, we definitely don't need this. We can blend it maybe like this and then here. For my taste, a bit too light. Right, and then I'm gonna cut all the lows. And here we go, we have pretty damn good rumble. If you really want to, let's say my kick is like in F, right? And I want to really focus on the F of my rumble, you can bring another EQ, open this up, find the F here in your low end. Because the rumble, there's a lot of noise in it, it's not really kind of tonal, but you can make it a bit more emphasizing some of the keys if you want to. Q a little bit down so that you focus on simple area. Let's say we are in the F, right? Here is around F. You can boost the area a bit, play with the Q a little bit. And if you want to make it even more pronounced, you can actually bring another one like this. Clean up right after it so that it can focus on this area a bit more. I wouldn't say it's really tonal rumble now, but it's a bit more emphasizing the area of the kick, making things a bit glued. I will just use Ozone's Exciter because for this type of sounds, I feel like it really works nicely. Tape saturation on the middle area. And add a bit like uh, retro sizzles on top end. Without. Yeah, it's so good, right? It's really cool low and it really unconventional means that makes it pretty unique, I will say. And if you just add a couple of percussions on top of that, you are ready to go for next peak time techno hit, I will say. Let's try. The last one on the list is very straightforward but extremely powerful and easy. One of my favorite kicks from my Debian analog sample pack. Very beefy, very cool kick. Let's create a simple driving bass sound. Pitch minus 12, one octave down. Let's create a simple envelope. Bring the voice down. And then activate the filter. And the envelope 2 is on the filter so that we have this nice filter moment. What you can do is activate the noise oscillator and bring kind of authentic lead sound from your sample library, whatever you use. It's kind of super soft type of sound here. And then you have to click this button so that when you play different notes, it plays different notes. And you have to fix the pitch by really playing with the pitch, right? If you play together. Of course, get this really driving rolling bass sound you want to activate filter. And together with the sidechain kick. And from here on, you can actually process them together to really match them nicely. But you can do add a slight distortion. And then maybe slight reverb and slight delay. And from here, you can play around with the filter to make everything really more authentic. So I will do something like this probably. Isn't that just perfect? By the way, if you enjoyed this video, I have another video that talks about four killer ways of using the sequencer. You can find it here. Take a look at that.